We are talking about linear and quadratic systems and inequalities, lesson number four. Solving quadratic inequalities in two variables without technology. Now we've covered how to solve quadratic inequalities or inequalities with just one variable. We've also solved linear inequalities with two variables. Now we're trying to solve quadratic inequalities in two variables. Now we're going to take a look at this example and see if we can determine um, and figure some things from, from this example here. We have an inequality and it's quadratic, it's x squared here. y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. Now we're going to take a look at this point 3 comma 0 and explain why it's in the solution region of y is greater than x squared minus 3x minus 4. So here if we have a coordinate here we have an x coordinate say y1 we have a y coordinate Corresponding to that, x is 0, so we have an x coordinate of 3, a y coordinate of 0. And now we're going to do this. We're going to substitute those values in for this inequality and test this condition. Is the y value going to be equal to or greater than this whole expression? So let's do that. So we're going to say that if the y value here was 0, we'll say 0. And then we'll see what this is. This x squared, so it's going to be 3 squared minus 3 times 3 minus 4. This is going, the right side is going to end up being 9 minus 9 minus 4, which is equal to negative 4 here. So we're testing this. We're saying, does this, oh, I should put this as a 3. This is red 3 because we substituted 3 for x. So when we take a look at that we say is this 0 then is the left side is it greater than or equal to this negative 4? Is this true? Is this statement true? And it is true and since it is true that this condition holds then that means that this x and y coordinate or this 3 comma 0 this coordinate is in the solution region because it satisfies the solution so 3 0 satisfies the inequality so we've had some practice now we we've determined here we started with the left side equal to the right side and if it was true for an equation then it was the solution here for an inequality we're not only testing equals, but we're testing whether or not this condition holds, that the y value is greater than or equal to this expression. And this 3 comma 0 did satisfy the inequality, and therefore it is in the solution region. Now we're going to work on part B. We're going to say, okay, determine whether the following test points are in the solution region of this inequality or in the solution region of y is less than or equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. So we're going to write the coordinates of the points in the table below here. So here are some test points. When we take a look, three zeros in there, let's take a look at 0, 0. Does 0, 0 satisfy this inequality? Well, we can test it here. 0 would be on the left side. And if 0 was the x value, this would all be 0, it would be negative 4. And 0, 0 is 0 greater than or equal to 0. Hmm. Was well, 0, great, 0 greater than or equal to 0? Oh, it is true. So it actually is in the solution region. So we'll add that here at 0, 0. Okay, what about negative 3, 0? Well, negative 3, 0, we'll say 0, 0 greater than or equal to. And using negative 3 here, we would say negative 3 squared is positive 9. And positive 9, that's 9 plus 9 is 18 minus 4. That's 14. So is 0 greater than 14? No, it isn't. So since it's not, then that's not in the solution region. Okay, if we continue this on, we can say, what about 0, 3? Well, let's see the y value is 3, is that greater than using 0? So that's negative 4. Is 3 greater than negative 4? Yes, it is. 
So 0, 3 is also in the solution region. Okay, then we use the same thing here for 0 and negative 7. And we continue this on, we will find that we get 1, 1, 4 is in there. And 2, negative 2 is also in the solution region. And all of these points, negative 3, 0, 0, negative 7, 7, negative 1, negative 4, 2, 8, 5, and negative 5, negative 2 are not in this solution region. But they are in this solution region. So let's just test. I'll just show you here with this last point here, negative 5 and negative 2. So if the y value is negative 2, then we're trying to test whether or not that's greater than or equal to the negative 5 squared minus 3 times negative 5 minus 4. So we have negative 2 greater than or equal to 25. Negative 3 times negative 5 is negative 15, or sorry, positive 15. And minus 4, so we have a negative 2 greater than or equal to 40 minus 4, which is 36. Is negative 2 greater than 36? No, it is not. This is not true. And therefore, since it doesn't satisfy this, then it, it satisfies the other one. And of course, you can always test every single one of these, but I've decided not to do that. I will leave it up to you for you to determine. But you'll notice that when we have a set of test points, it will either, either satisfy or it won't. There's nothing else in there here in this real numbers. Taking a look at this graph, then we have two copies of this parabola, y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. We have one on the left, one on the right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to plot the points from the top row into the first grid here. These points are in the solution region to this inequality of y is greater than or equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. So here we have 3, 0 is going to be 1, 2, 3 is right there. 0, 0 is right there. 0, 3 is right here. 1, 4 is right there. And 2, negative 2, 1, 2, negative 2. So there are all our points. And you'll notice something special about that one. Let's plot the points from the second row onto the second grid. These are the points of the solution region to the inequality y is less than x squared minus 3x minus 4. So here, negative 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, negative 7 is down here. 7, 7, 1, oh, sorry, negative 1 is right there positive one also is outside there. Negative 4, 2, negative 4, 2, 1, 2, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 5 is right there, and negative 5, negative 2 is right there. And then you can start to see a pattern here because you might be able to say, well, what about this point here and this point here? And you would be right. All of these points would satisfy the y equals less than x squared minus 3x minus 4. Okay, so now once we have these points, we can shade the region for the inequality y is greater than x squared minus 3x minus 4 on the first grid. I use a orange highlighter here. And we, if we just start adding these points here, we can say, oh, here, you can see this solid line here is because there's also an extra one on the bottom, extra line on the bottom. So here we have our shaded region and it continues going up and up and up and up, but you can see it there. And I'm going to use a different color here to shade the other region. So just so you get the idea. So you have that point there and that point there and that point there and that point there. Following this line here, shading all this region, and so on, so on, so on. Everything underneath, underneath, and it continues to go up following that line, 
and so on. Okay, so you have this is your y greater than or equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. And on this side, we have our y is less than x squared minus 3x minus 4. Do you start to see a pattern here? We have this boundary line, this determining curve, which is our familiar parabola shape. It's our quadratic equation. But one side is greater than and one side is less than. So you'll notice from these quadratic inequalities in two variables that you can have either an inside shade to the parabola or an outside shade to the parabola you can see here. You can either have inside the parabola, what we can call inside, kind of bounded inside here with the orange, or it could be outside the parabola this way. Now the other way to think of it is we can see the top of this quadratic equation is what we look looks like it's inside and what's below the equation is what looks like it's on the outside. Of course it would be different also if this was flipped to, to the other version. So we can think about it as inside and outside but it also depends on whether or not we're talking about above or below. But we can use a test point. Here we can use this following procedure then to graph the solution region. So we can think of it as graphing the corresponding quadratic equation and we're very familiar with that. We have had a lot of practice this course in uh, graphing quadratic equations. We can use either intercepts or other means. The graph will be solid or broken according to the inequality rules that you know equal to if it has that extra bar on the bottom. If it's also equal to then it's going to be a solid line. If it doesn't say that it's equal to, if it's just greater than or less than then it's going to be a dashed line. Then just like the other inequality we can choose a test point. Of course it shouldn't lie on the graph of the quadratic equation. Choose a test point if it's possible. If 0, 0 is not on the the quadratic equation line curve, then we should probably use that one. That one's a very nice one to use. But if the test point does satisfy the quadratic inequality, then shade the region in which the test point resides. So it's either inside or outside the problem that includes that test point. If the test point does not satisfy the quadratic inequality, then there's only two possibilities. So you just shade the other region that's inside or outside that does not include the test point. So here we can see we only have to do a test point once. Once we find the test point satisfies the solution, then we just shade that area. If it does not, if this point that we chose here did not satisfy, then we just shade the other side. In the same case here. So if we chose this as our test point, if it satisfied the inequality, then we would shade everything that included the test point. If it didn't satisfy the inequality and provided our math was correct, then we'd have to shade the other side. Okay, so using that then, let's try our luck at example one. We're going to shade the solution region to the inequality y is less than 20 plus x minus x squared and do it on the grid below. So I'm going to use our graph and calculator to give us kind of an idea of what this might look like. So we have y equals and we have, we're going to pretend that this less than is going to be an equal sign. So we have y1 is equal to 20 oops, plus x minus x squared and then we can graph that. And let's do a standard zoom here. So zoom 6. So it looks, oh yes, we're going to have to change this so we can see the top of it. So I'll change our window and Y max will make it, uh, let's make it 30 to see how it looks. And graph that now. Ah, that looks a little bit better. So here, if we were just to sketch it, it would look something like so. And something like that. Uh, it doesn't quite look very nice, but you can see that it kind of looks like a parabola shape. So we're going to use our window settings here. Our window settings 
r x is going to be from negative 10 to 10 and our y is going to be from negative 10 to 30 so we can see that that's what it looks like okay so with that in mind then oh you know what we did we drew that line but it wasn't supposed to be solid here this was uh, y is less than and so I'm going to make it uh, see if I can make it just dashed here dash 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 okay uh, see if I can make it dash it looks a little better dashed here dash 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 make it look better like a dash there so here's a dashed line now that's something that we need to make sure that we remember so if it does not include the equal sign then we're going to have a dashed line now let's use a test point so here um, I made y1 equal to 20 plus x minus x squared I graphed it I did my window settings and now I also remember that this is going to be a dashed line because it's y is only less than so it's only less than and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my test point my test point here because I see the origin is not on the line definitely not on the line so I'm going to use that as my test point test point will say 0 0 and let's see what happens so I'm going to use this 0 for y, so 0, and then we're going to be testing that. We have 20 plus our 0 minus our 0 squared. And so here we have 0 is less than 20. Is 0 less than 20? Yes, it is. So this is true. So we found that this coordinate of 0, 0 satisfied the equation. It made it true. And therefore, the, the spot where the test point is in is actually part of the solution. So we're going to shade that region here. So here it is. I'm going to shade this region. And we get this. This is my solution region right there. Okay, so you're ready for your assignment. And I will see you in class.